All right, I want to move on to the big story of the day, which is inflation. Sticker shock in the grocery aisle where prices are up a whopping 7.4 percent in just the past year. So is there any relief in sight? Joining us now is Bert Flickinger, Managing Director at Strategic Resource Group. Bert, good to have you here. And I just want uh, to throw up a graphic real quick to show everybody just the impact these high prices are having at the grocery store, because it looks like it's affecting just about every food group. We've got meat and eggs up by double digits, bread up more than 7%, milk up nearly 7%, you name it. So, Bert, the question is, do you think these prices have peaked or are we going to move even higher? Alexis, high and going higher. And part of the problem beyond the cost of raw materials is uh, the packaging materials. 80% is made in uh, mainland China. So there won't be enough Lay's potato chips for the Super Bowl uh, to your good prior segment because they can't get the inside film uh, to make the packages. And that applies to salted snacks, cookies and crackers, all the way to sports beverages. Uh, So uh, prices high and going higher. So I was looking a little bit closer at this consumer price index today, and we, we looked at the cost of eating at home. It's actually climbing faster than the cost of dining out. Does that make going to a restaurant more appealing for people, do you think, or or it doesn't really matter? Doesn't matter, Alexis. Uh, Full disclosure, our family, SM Flickinger, was uh, one of the five largest suppliers uh, to restaurants. And typically, restaurants mark up the cost of the food about 300 percent and mark up the cost of the beverages 700 to 900 percent, where the grocery stores only mark it up about uh, 20 percent. Uh, so to go through a McDonald's drive through window uh, costs an average, average family uh, with tax uh, for value meal or, uh, about $11, so $50 uh, through the McDonald's drive-in window. That same cost through Albertson Safeway Kroger uh, would be less than $10 for fresher and better food. So, you know, Goldman Sachs took a look at um, the impact all this is having on the average household, and they came up with a figure that it's costing the average U.S. household about $250 more a month, this rise in prices. And that's a heavy burden for a lot of families. I guess the question is, how much of a hurdle will inflation be to consumer spending and to economic growth in the coming months? Alexis, you're referencing the perfect report from Goldman Sachs' David Costin. Uh, is that the average family uh, in the U.S. will spend about 3000 more per year, uh, uh, food, uh, gas, groceries, home heating, as much as $5,000. And uh, as Costin said, in uh, the retail sales increases, uh, about 50 to 60 percent of, of that is inflation, not increased unit sales. Uh, so we're in a supply chain crisis and an inflation crisis. Uh, the worst we've seen in 40 years dating back to 1982, and will continue to be bad through the balance of this year. We heard from a number of of big um, food companies and restaurant chains just this week alone telling us they have or are about to raise prices. Uh, Chipotle, Coca-Cola, PepsiCo, Unilever. Um, How much more do you think prices will rise in 2022, especially if we have the Fed get aggressive and raise interest rates enough to rein in these high prices? Alexis, the the prices, uh, typically there's one price increase every fiscal year, every crop year. Uh, Last year, there were two price increases. This year, there'll probably be three price increases. So the brand manufacturers know uh, with a a short supply of uh, packaging and product, they can raise prices with impunity because they focus on on margins, as you and your team uh, report. Uh, so for profitability and increasing the stock prices, the brand manufacturers are raising prices with impunity. And our uh, strategic resource group uh, study with retailers across the country, consumers are revolting as they are in Canada and switching from branded product to private label products. So England, Scotland, Ireland, Canada, NZ, Australia, 50 to 60 percent of the unit sales are private label versus 20 percent in the U.S. You'll see private label sales increase anywhere from 30 to 50 percent because of this concerning cost of inflation, what you referenced from Goldman Sachs, families paying 250 a month and that 250 a month's going higher. Uh, It's unbudgeted and real crusher for the consumers. 
makes sense. Uh, those private label companies can certainly see an opportunity here. But I want to talk about some of the reasons for this uh, higher food inflation. We keep talking here about the supply chain disruptions because of the pandemic and labor shortages. But also in that Goldman Sachs report, they were talking about the, the tools farmers need uh, for their crops, things like fertilizer and pesticides. Even those prices are going higher, right? Is that what's going to continue to put pressure on these higher prices this year? Yes, Alexis, as you and uh, your great team have been listening to the conference calls of the fertilizer suppliers, fertilizer prices are record high, uh, highest since crop year 2011 and going higher. And the cost of uh, transportation is obviously higher, uh, cost of labor is higher. So it, while we had a record uh, crop year in the continental US, uh, because of all the shortages, uh, while the farmers are producing more and more productive than yield per acre, uh, because of the cost you're referencing, uh, particular uh, fertilizer, uh, prices on the shelf are going to continue to skyrocket at the local supermarket. And I want to ask your opinion on how e-commerce fits into all of this and us buying groceries online. Before the pandemic, that was a quite, quite a small number and projections were not very big. But that's changed now. And do you think it's changed for good? It, it has changed for, for good, Alexis, in that uh, prior to the pandemic, 12% of sales were online. Now it's 20 to 20% uh, 20 going to 25%. Uh, so online uh, e-commerce sales uh, for food and consumables uh, going higher. And also uh, as uh, uh, Target, uh, Win Winco, uh, Walmart to wait for and shop right and stop and shop are all, all doing. Uh, they're having buy online, uh, pick up curbside or buy online, del deliver, or some people are um, uh, using takeoff technologies with uh, shop right and stop and shop uh, to buy their shelf stable uh, products online and just go to in the store to only pick out uh, produce and, and uh, fresh seafood and potentially meat products. Yeah, you know, I'm one of them. I like to I like to go pick out that kind of stuff in person if I can. But those other staples, uh, you know, non-perishables, online we go. All right, Bert Flickinger, Managing Director at Strategic Resource Group. Thanks so much for being with us.